So good evening and good afternoon and good morning uh, to the listeners of the webinar from the European Resuscitation Council on Ilcor World Restart a Heart on today. I'm Bernd Böttiger. I'm the co-chair of Ilko World Restart a Heart. I'm an anesthesiologist from Cologne. And I'm sharing this together with sharing this together with sharing this together with Hi, um, my name is Andy Lockie. I am a co-chair as well. Um, I think we've got a bit of feedback on our microphones. I'd ask all of our speakers to go on to mute, please. All of our speakers to that sounds better. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, yes, my name is Andy Lockie. I co-chair the World Restarter Heart Initiative with Professor Bottinger. Okay, thank you very much. Now we don't have any recall anymore. So, again, welcome from my side. World Restarter Heart is on 16th of October every year. So this is in three and a half weeks from now. A cordial welcome. We will have four or five presentations within the next hour plus minus and um, first of all Andy and myself would like to introduce to all of you who are listening the idea of Ilko World Restart a Heart and how it started. It started in Europe in 2012 when um, we, the ERC, approached um, the um, European uh, Parliament and we asked for support for a European Cardiac Arrest Awareness Week. We get, got the support from 400 members of the European Parliament in 2012 and the first European Restart a Heart Day then was launched in 2013. By the way, already with a motto, children can save lives. So uh, already at the beginning, we were focusing on children. And this European Restart a Heart Day was a very successful entity. And all the 32 national resuscitation councils under the umbrella of the European Resuscitation Council had different activities every year on October 16 and in the weeks before and thereafter. And uh, Professor Andrew Locke and myself, we approached in 2017, we approached ILCOR, the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation, and uh, made the proposal to make this very successful European activity a worldwide activity. This was then po very positively supported by the ILCOR and all seven ILCOR councils, the American Heart, the Canadians, the South Americans, the Africans, the Asians, and the Australasians joined these activities together with the European uh, Resuscitation Council. And then we had um, the first World Restart a Heart Day in 2018. But not only the seven ILCOR councils joined us, but also the European Society of Anesthesiology, the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiology, the World Federation of Intensive Care and Critical Care um, Organizations, the World Federation of Emergency Physicians, um, St. John Ambulance, and the International Federation of the Red Cross, um, who were active and who are active in um, many, many countries, 192 in the world. So we are really a worldwide movement right now. World Restart a Heart is worldwide since 2018. Next slide, please. What are the objectives of World Restart a Heart? World Restart a Heart, as already said before, is always on October 16. Every year, um, it ILCOR will share resources and will, will enthuse regional councils to take part. And it is very important to know that it is not essential that activity takes place exactly on October 16, which is a Sunday this year. But this they will be used for media promotion or the day before or Monday after. But World Restart Heart activities can 
even be now or in November, for, for example, the American, the American Heart has their week in November. So 16th of October is just something like an anchor for World Restarter Heart. And World Restarter Heart activity will not be limited to school children, but to all lay people. There, it can be a focus on school children, but all lay people are in the focus. We have different mottos every year, but the key message of World Restart Heart is check, call, and compress. That is what lay people should do. Check for signs of life, call the EMS, and compress fast and deep. So World Restart Heart so far has been incredibly successful. Uh, in 2019, as you'll see from uh, this publication in the Journal of the American Heart Association, um, over, up to 206 million people were reached and over 5.4 million trained in CPR worldwide. And that's a phenomenal number for an initiative that hasn't really been in, in place really uh, for that long. And it just shows the, the phenomenal engagement uh, and activity from all around the world uh, that we've seen just in this last few years, despite many challenges. So if we look uh, back to 2020, um, we had the challenge of COVID, the COVID pandemic, which interfered with face-to-face -face training uh, on a global scale. So in 2020, we decided uh, that we would uh, concentrate on messaging via social media and via the internet. And so we saw many different activities across the globe. We saw the first sunrise of the 16th of October in New Zealand, the first sunrise in the world. And you can see there our logo uh, as the sun is rising there. We saw phenomenal activity in Australia with a good friend of World Restart Heart, Greg Page, who is a children's entertainer in, in Australia and very well known. Uh, and he himself had survived a cardiac arrest uh, and is doing fantastic work in Australia to try to get CPR onto the school curriculum. In the Philippines, uh, we had a commitment from the Red Cross there uh, and a celebration there. Uh, in South Africa, again, we, we saw uh, social media messaging. Our friends in India uh, released a special postage stamp and myself and Professor Bottinger were honoured to be able to join that, uh, that meeting where they, uh, they presented that for the first time. And despite many challenges uh, in, in, the, in the sort of political landscape as well as the COVID landscape, our friends in Sri Lanka also managed to get some training done as well. In America, uh, our, our colleagues at the American Heart Association uh, enlisted uh, the, the services of a, an actor who's one, in one of their, their popular uh, TV programs to give a short presentation about CPR. Uh, and Canada as always were very innovative in their, in their use of social media and messaging. Uh, and again, myself and Professor Bossinger were, were delighted to accept an invitation, sadly only virtually, uh, but uh, still delighted to uh, virtually attend anyway a meeting in, in Brazil. And one of the really big successes uh, was engaging with uh, artists and musicians about publishing songs that they felt were to the beat of uh, the recommendation for CPR. So we were delighted to see the Vienna Philharmonic uh, post this tweet about the Radetzky March and how it can be performed at the tempo needed. And also uh, Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, personally posted about Phantom of the Opera to, to really support our initiative. And then also in America, we had uh, a, a quite a famous internet uh, ophthalmologist who is also uh, a survivor of cardiac arrest who posted his own very emotional story. And as we've already mentioned, Ilcor have been supportive throughout uh, so much so that World Restart at Heart is now a formal working group within the governance structure of ILCOR. As Professor Bottinger has already said, our messaging has gone out uh, mainly due to the excellent efforts from the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent to 192 out of 194 countries in the world, which is phenomenal. Uh, and through social media, we've been able to reach so many more people 
than we would have done in the pre-social media era in terms of our messaging. And then uh, last year, uh, although we still were not able to do much in the way of face-to-face -face training, we also focused our efforts around showing that just it's, it's the normal, ordinary people whose lives can be saved. So whilst we see a lot of stories about celebrities, and in Europe, we obviously saw a very high profile case in the European finals, the football finals with Christian Eriksen, but it's, uh, it's, it's mainly normal, ordinary people. And you'll see on the right here, uh, a poster which shows people of all ages, people of all uh, sort of backgrounds and how CPR can save their life. And that's, that's the, the, the motto that we used last year. And so now we come on to 2022 and back to Professor Bottinger. Thank you very much, Andy. And maybe just uh, another information for, for last year, we are just sampling the numbers and we will come up with a publication on the activities that has been done around World Restart a Heart last year within the next few months, I guess. And uh, we are working very hard with the lead of our Indian colleagues um, to get all the numbers together. For World Restart a Heart 2022, we, have, we had a lot of discussions about the motto besides check, call, compress. Um, there is every year a different motto. And for 2022, we said CPR, everyone deserves the opportunity. And that is a very, very nice motto because it is focusing on lay people. Every lay people deserves the opportunity to be trained how to do CPR with check, call, compress. And on the other side, it also focuses on a victim. Everyone deserves the opportunity to get resuscitated. We hope that we can go back to face-to-face -face trainings um, all over the world. It is, by the way, as mentioned before, the 10th anniversary of the European Restart a Heart Day and Week. So we will have some party in Europe around October 16 this year. And, we, and one of the major aims is to include CPR on school curricula in as many countries as possible with as recommended by us and by the World Health Organization, WHO, with two hours per year started at the age of 10 or 12 years, two hours per year as long as they go to school. In Europe, by the way, we have managed already in six countries that it is mandatory by law to have school children educated in CPR. Um, and in at least 23 countries, it is at least a suggestion. Um, World Restart a Heart, all activities are welcome, all training activities, all political activities, all social media activities. And if you're doing something around World Restart a Heart, and if you're just posting something on social media, it would be great if you use the hashtag that is written here, hashtag World Restart a Heart, that will enable us to come up with um, the um, summary of the numbers and of the activities this year because we are sampling this to report it again in a publication next year and if i can just uh, come in on that uh, professor bottinger because we've had a, a question on slido as from martin mass as to if there's any other special hashtag no there isn't martin uh, this is the one hashtag we want people to use because if we have a diverse number of hashtags it it dilutes the impact when we measure it on social media so please make sure we don't mind if if local areas want to use local variants around the motto we know that cpr everyone deserves the opportunity can be translated in different ways um but as long as every post has got the world restart a heart hashtag that will enable us to to measure impact so you can use additional hashtags but in each case please use hashtag world restart a heart and and with this we are happy to receive um, further questions or comments, and I will give uh, the final words um, to Professor Andrew Locke. So I, I think rather than take any further questions at this stage, I think it's it's appropriate we move on to our presentations. Uh, we will have chance, uh, if you please, if you want to uh, ask, ask any questions, we will be able to see them uh, and 
Uh, any relevant questions we will uh, ask our speakers to answer after their presentation, but we will also have a time for a question and answer session at the end as well, if you if you have any other questions. So okay. I'll hand back to Professor Bottinger to um, yeah. introduce the first speaker. Yeah, thank you very much, Andy. So there are no further questions on Slido, as I can see. I would like to uh, remind everyone here that this webinar is recorded and th that gives us the opportunity uh, to post it on the ERC website in the next day so that many people can see what we are doing here and what we are discussing and presenting tonight. So it's a great pleasure for me now to introduce our next speaker, which is Nadine Roth. She is an assistant to the board of the German Resuscitation Council. She is a very active member of the Young German Resuscitation Council Group. She is, by the way, a very new member of the editorial board of Resuscitation Plus. She is very active on social media, um, not only related to World Restart a Heart, but the focus on World Restart a Heart. She is the inventor of the hashtag My Song Can Save Lives. You will see a little bit more about that during her presentation, I guess. And she's working in my department as my personal assistant. So Nadine, we are very much looking forward to your presentation now. Well, thank you for this introduction. That makes it possible to, for me to skip my first slide with the introduction and the conflict of interest, because I think you mentioned everything. So I will be talking about social media and how it can support the World Restart a Heart um, activities. I did a very similar talk last year at the ESC webinar about World We Start a Heart. And last year, I talked a lot about how the social media and digital strategies became the focus due to the pandemic. So um, like Andy already told you in 2020, we had to think about a way of how to keep this life-saving awareness campaign alive in the pandemic. And we had a lot of digital activities, photo and video competitions, digital resuscitation trainings, digital or hybrid conferences and symposiums. We had YouTube playlists with CPR scenes in movies. And Andy also already told you a lot of other examples. So what I was thinking about while preparing today's presentation was how did World We Start a Heart look like before the pandemic? And how did the social media activities look like before the pandemic? So what I found was, this is for Germany, so I use the example of my own country, that this is what World We Start a Heart looked like in 2019 before the pandemic. We had a huge flash mob, we had a marching band, a helicopter, we had a TV there, radio there, and we did a face to face training. And in a lot of other countries, there also were face to face trainings or big mass trainings or activities like this. And what did our social media look like in this year? Like this. So we had posts about the activities that we did on that day. We posted pictures, we posted videos, and this it was our whole social media campaign in 2019. So now I was thinking about, does this really inspire people to learn CPR? Do they understand from looking at this picture what CPR is or now, now what to do? Probably not. So during the pandemics, we changed the approach. You already heard my song can save lives mentioned before. This was the first year of the pandemic. What we did is that we asked artists whose song indicates the appropriate rhythm for resuscitation. So 100 to 120 beats per minute. And we invited them to post their song on their social media platforms around the world we start a hard day and ask their fans to listen to the song and, and to inform themselves. You can see the example of Andrew Lloyd Webber here. So we sent them sample text that they can use and it includes 
listen to it and please inform yourself about resuscitation. And we added a link where you can find information. So for the English post, we use the ILCOR website. Here is a German example where we use the website of the German Resuscitation Council, where CPR is explained step by step. So what we did is we had singers encouraging their fans to look at this topic. It was not politicians or doctors asking you to care about this topic. So the chance that you care about it, even if you haven't heard about it before, was much higher because it was your favorite singer asking you to care about it. And you also had a direct link to more information. We did this in a lot of countries and I think this was really successful. In 2021, um, you have already seen the hashtag was CPR saved my life. So we asked survivors to take a picture holding a piece of paper with the hashtag and with the name and age. Because we wanted to add a human element to the event, we wanted to really hit home that it can affect everyone. So that again, we can motivate people to care about this topic and to really inform themselves or train others if they already know what they, uh, what they have to do. We have one example here, that's Prima from Sri Lanka, who is now 90 years old, and she was resuscitated 14 years earlier. Or he, down here, you can see a lot of German examples. It is not necessary to do everything exactly like this. So, for example, in Germany, we ask people instead of taking a picture with this a piece of paper, we ask them to send in videos because it worked much better for us to get responses. So we had videos and then we took screenshots um, and made a short sentence about this so that we could post this in addition to the videos that we had. A few nice examples that we got was the minister who had a cardiac arrest during mass and then got resuscitated by the churchgoers. We also changed it in a different way because we also asked people who did the saving to send us stories as well. So we have Kia who saved a 13 year old fellow student's life during the school break by doing CPR. So every country can change whatever idea we have for the worldwide model so it fits their own needs. Social media was a part from World, of World Restart a Heart from the very beginning. Already in the first year, in 2018, more than 12.7 million people were reached with the hashtag World Restart a Heart. And you already heard that in 2019, more than 200 million people were reached. So it was always a part of the world we start a heart. But at least for our country and probably for other countries as well, the approach to social media really changed. So when beforehand we were talking about what we are doing, we were showing what we are doing um, in face-to-face -face trainings, now we did a separate social media campaign and co uh, concentrated only on the digital and only on the social media. So what I encourage you to do now that um, we are going back to face-to-face -to -face training in a lot of countries is do not forget about the other part. So of course you should post pictures about the face-to-face -face training that you are doing. For example, if you are teaching students, maybe some other teacher or student will see this and will get encouraged to uh, repeat this at his own school. But please don't forget about the second part of social media, where you can reach people that you do not reach via face-to-face -face training. So please have, think about having a social media campaign as well as the face-to-face -face training think about what you can do that really inspires people to learn about CPR, even if they maybe didn't care about the topic before. So please 
please take part in this year and please join us. And you already heard that it is important to use the hashtag of World We Start the Heart because it makes measuring much easier. We had different hashtags in the past. Or for example, the hashtag World We Start the Heart Day is still being used. And this makes it difficult for us to gather the numbers. So please use this hashtag exactly like it is. You can add everything you want, but please use it as it is. And one other example where I don't have a picture to show you, but I um, wanted to tell you about how you can also use social media in the context of World We Start Hard is something that we did last year. We used social media and influencers to gather signatures for a petition because we want some political change. We want it to be made mandatory to have school children education in schools. So we used social media for this. We got in contact with social media influencers and we had them spread the message across social media. So you can also use it for something like this. Please join us and please use the hashtag World We Start a Heart. So thank you very much, Nadine, for this um, quick run through uh, social media activities and what can be done around World We Start a Heart and um, for your invitation that everyone is um, going on this track, at least also on this track, if she or he likes to do so. Um, I don't have any questions. I cannot at least see any questions in that Slido screen that I have here in parallel. Um, and if there are not any questions at this very moment, maybe we should come to the next presentation. So the microphone is going over to Professor Andrew Lockie again. Thank you very much. Uh, just to say that uh, we do have a poll that is active at the moment, uh, which is asking whether you will be doing any activities on the 16th of October. And I'd probably just broaden that uh, to any activities for World Restart at Heart on or around the 16th of October. Uh, so please, can you complete that if possible? I'm now going to invite a, a very good friend of uh, European Resuscitation Council and uh, World Restart at Heart uh, to give the next presentation. Um, historically, as part of World Restart at Heart, we have had phenomenal commitment uh, from uh, members of the uh, Middle Eastern uh, Pan-Arab Pan uh, community. Uh, but uh, within the last year, we were approached by our next speaker, who had uh, input into a much broader geography uh, of, of, of Middle Eastern and North African countries, uh, who has, is now going to tell us about the, the successes so far and the challenges associated with trying to get that broader footprint of awareness about World Restart to Heart. So I'm going to hand over to Zara Al-Halili, who will be able to introduce herself, no doubt. But thank you very much for your presentation this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going uh, to present uh, my slides to you. Thank you so much for uh, inviting us uh, to attend, uh, to be part of this uh, great uh, webinar today, this evening. Um, and um, uh, I'm honored, uh, along with the team, that we are here today. Um, uh, so uh, today we will talk to you about who we are, the challenges are a pulse wave, and uh, what our members are up to. Uh, I'm the Arab Country CPR Group Lead with vast experience in conducting events and community campaigns across wide geography. Uh, I'm the past MENA AHA Regional Director, uh, Trauma Programs National Coordinator, AHA Faculty, and Instructor with various organizations. And these are our expert advisors and board members whom have been extremely supportive throughout the past few months. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Tajaldeen, he is an experienced ERC faculty. Uh, probably most of you know him. And Dr. Tagreed, uh, she is experienced AHA faculty. And Dr. Ghassan, experienced WHO Healthy Cities program. 
Our members representing 22 Arab countries, they are amazingly passionate. Uh, uh, these are clips from our monthly calls. Uh, both Professor Andy and Professor Byrne kindly joined us in our August call. Um, so mentors along my journey, um, I met with both chairs, Professor Andy and Professor Byrne in April, and they shared with me valuable resources and researches which helped me to formalize the foundation. And I also had the opportunity to visit Yorkshire Ambulance this summer and met with Jason, who is the lead for the World Restart the Heart in the UK. He kindly shared the resources, hints and tips and answered my questions during the visit and in subsequent calls. I highly recommend visiting the YAS website. It's quite informative and contains safe stories, videos, media, and other useful resources. Um, first time World you start the heart for most of our members in the Middle East and the Arab countries. Uh, though our members are subject matter expert in their fields, but some of them never conducted a CPR awareness for their communities, because mainly they are healthcare providers. Frequently, frequent calls and guiding them through the process and encouraging them to start uh, and also meeting them regularly, monthly with all and having one-to-one -one was very helpful uh, to focus on the main goal. Uh, so we have some challenges along the way, which is expected. Um, the different time zones and weekends. So issue number one, uh, there are five different time zones across the 22 Arab countries from east to west, from Oman to Mauritania. Issue number two was the weekend days are not the same. Uh, they span over three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. So finding the most suitable time was not easy for all members to meet. And then we finally decided that Saturday evening, 8 p.m. UAE was selected for all the monthly meetings. And we reserved 10 days for the October World Restart the Heart activities uh, to overcome the days difference, the weekend difference. And for the language, initial thoughts and plans were that Arabic will be used as first language and English will be the second language for the campaign. But we soon realized that seven countries, French rather than English, is the second language. So the Tunisian Resuscitation Council was approached and Mr. Murad has always been very helpful and supportive with his team to translate the required materials to French. Um, different media platforms. Apparently, again, not all the 22 countries are using the same social media platforms. So we created accounts for all of these various social media, Arabic hashtag, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube channel. Um, again, this is another challenge that we face. Some facilities did not have enough trainers and volunteers. So what we did, um, facilities with experienced active trainers and volunteers were approached and connected them and in certain cases, uh, train the trainer sessions were organized uh, to build capacities. Lack of equipment, shortage of mannequins uh, apparently was there. So we adopted two main solutions depending on the situation of each country. So uh, we uh, solution one, we connected them with facilities in their countries who have equipment and collaborate with them. And solution two, we shipped to them donated new mannequins. Uh, for the AED part, uh, um, a simulation cardboard AED kit was designed, is already available and designed to help with campaigns, was our recommendations. Using a smartphone, the instructor will use an app and the participant will follow the instructions and use the pads. And what, what's nice about this kit that it can be shipped to countries without the need to go through any custom clearance because uh, that's usually typically required for real AEDs because it's only a cardboard kit. Uh, who doesn't need sponsors? So we adopted two approaches. Um, general approach for all the Arab countries, we, we approach sponsors with history of supporting community campaigns. And the other approach was country focused. Each member have contacted companies and sponsors available in their own country so far. So majority received really very good positive connections. And no video short video was available for both the hands-only CPR and AED in Arabic. So we worked with a sponsor to develop this video, customize it to meet the Arab environment, and it will be in English and French as well, and then plans to have the sign language added to it. Um, we developed a toolkit uh, and resources uh, and a website. It will host uh, all of these resources and it will be used also for participants to upload the training data after the con conclusion of the campaign. 
Uh, for the population with special needs, uh, uh, as you know, uh, this year's motto, like Nadine uh, kindly mentioned and shared, CPR, everyone deserves the opportunity and also along uh, with the international SDG requirements. No one is left behind. So members are approaching facilities that house these vulnerable uh, population and those with special needs for uh, the CPR awareness. Um, while I was serving as an advisor for a major organization in Saudi Arabia, um, help was requested with a challenge regarding the mannequins being used for CPR training for visually impaired people being not designed to meet their need, unfortunately. So I approached an engineering company and for a solution and a mannequin add-on kit with audio feature was developed. The kit was tested and positive comments received from the visually impaired participants and their instructors. And the kit can be uh, programmed in many different languages. So for now we have it programmed in Arabic and English. Um, uh, who cannot man uh, we cannot manage uh, what we cannot measure. So, of course, um, what uh, a challenge that we discovered again in our region that we don't have data or reliable data for 22 countries on out of hospital cardiac arrest. So we created a group working with experienced researchers to review uh, the out of hospital cardiac arrest incidents, prevention and management in Arab countries, and also conduct CAP surveys regarding CPR and the use of AEDs among the community. And uh, now, um, so these were our 10 challenges, top 10 challenges. There were minor ones as well. And now uh, I'm pleased to present my colleague, Dr. Hassan, who will now take uh, you on a journey with the Arab Pulse uh, Wave uh, for our campaign that will start on the 10th of October. Uh, thank you, Zahra. And I really appreciate your efforts uh, for collaborating with all of us and coordinating our work. I'm really, really proud to be part of this group. Um, uh, I wanted just to take you, we called this campaign as the Arab Pulse Wave. This is our very first experience to uh, engage with the communities of various Arabic countries, given all the challenges that you've seen and all the challenges that we've, Zahra, uh, uh, presented to, to you, we needed to do something that is quite different. So what we've done is uh, we looked at, <clears throat> um, if you look at the, the Arabic countries, um, the Arab uh, countries uh, over here from the east to the west, we it's divided into five main zones. So as in, in every zone, there was a set of countries, uh, time zone, there's a set of countries. We wanted to travel on a, a certain day from one zone to another as the sun goes, which simulates a pulse wave. And that's why we called it the Arab pulse wave, because we wanted to engage with all the Arab countries during the day that we decide. So um, what well, you could see here, all the Arab, uh, Arab countries uh, divided on the five zones, and we are gonna face some challenges and we're working to, to, um, to, sim to clear these uh, challenges. So given the fact that uh, not all the countries can actually meet on the 16th, we said that we could uh, start from the 10th until the 20th. And um, uh, we give the opportunity or the choice for each country to decide where and what, what to do during these uh, 10 days with the general guidelines of engaging with the community participants from the general community or within the uh, businesses or even at schools. On the 20th, though, we decided to go on a live stream and uh, engage with all the countries based on the time zone. It starts at 12 noon as the sun moves across the, the time zones, the five time zones. Each uh, country will display um, uh, the work uh, done in, within the, nine, the previous nine days. Um, contributions from participants, um, perhaps a little short video describing their experience, contributions from government officials, local national media, it's basically uh, left for each country to decide within a set of guidelines. We wanted to standardize, uh, we wanted to standardize the, um, uh, the, the display, so all we, we minimize the requirements to internet um, uh, and um, a computer and and a, and a screen that we can share and stream through a clear microphone. And we wanted to uh, get the, um the, get a part, some participants up to five with the flag of the country behind uh, the scene. 
um, uh, and hopefully or get a film uh, of that uh, so that we can display it on the day. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Zahra. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ghassan, very much uh, for your uh, uh, presentation. And now my last uh, few slides. Um, so what our members have been up to? Um, uh, in Libya, they are targeting schools and universities, and they developed an Arabic teaser video to prepare the students. Very cool one. In Morocco, they will hold an international medical emergency conference, incorporating and highlighting the World Restart the Heart activities. In Oman, members will be participating in the Oman Science Festival, where they plan to train um, hundreds of uh, visiting students to the event. In Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Red Crescent Authority will be offering training to the visually impaired population, as well as other activities across the Kingdom 13 districts. In Lebanon, international symposiums on sports cardiology and uh, sudden cardiac arrest prevention incorporating and highlighting the World Restart the Heart activities. And in other countries, the members will be offering uh, the activities in schools, universities, sports clubs, malls, worship, worship facilities, TV and media outlets, and, and the list goes on. And our um, main uh, long-term uh, goal is the uh, school children. They are the center focus of our work. And uh, our school group is uh, finding out whether or not the CPR curriculum is currently available in our 22 Arab countries. And we are working with the WHO EMRO region staff uh, since that the school health is at forefront of their plans. Our long-term goal to have the CPR training becomes part of the school curriculum and we will be lobbying uh, regulations decision makers in these countries. Um, so by end of September, announcement will be posted on all social media platforms that we have created. Invite in, uh, it will be in Arabic, English, and French, inviting and encouraging all training centers to participate in this region-wide campaign. On the 10th of October, the trigger signal will be initiated, signaling the start of the World Restart the Heart Arab Pulse Wave campaign across the 22 Arab countries for 10 consecutive days. And um, we need to be inclusive so everyone deserves the opportunity and no one is left behind. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank Dr. Mahmoud, Dr. Atagri, Dr. Ghassan, Dr. Muna, Dr. Sabri, Murad, Salam, Jason, Professor Bernd, Professor Andy, and many others for their support and help uh, throughout uh, this journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is a wonderful description of um, a phenomenal collaborative effort um, that is it's just going to hopefully give some amazing results. Um, does your collaborative cover Qatar as well? Yes. So are there any plans? Obviously, later on this year, we've already mentioned that one of the big audiences uh, that uh, saw a cardiac arrest uh, managed perfectly uh, mm -hmm. last year was uh, football. And of course, Qatar is hosting the World Cup. So exactly. are there any, any plans around the World Cup? Uh, so they did ask me that question, if they can postpone it until that time. I said, no, we need to run it in October. But during the Cup, you can run as uh, more campaigns if you wish. Uh, but yes, they are training right now the security, the police, and all the volunteers who will be host, uh, working on the World Cup. And they are busy. All the facilities in Qatar are busy uh, training uh, these uh, workforce. Yes, because there's, there's an ideal opportunity there because uh, obviously the, the audience of football matches does tend to be the demographic that may be more likely to have a cardiac arrest. True. So, uh, so okay. it, it's a good audience to utilise. Fantastic. Um, we don't appear to have any questions on, online, but I, I would just say, so, so when did you actually start this collaborative, Sarah? Um, in April, after I met you immediately. <laughs> so this is this all of this work has happened since April. Yes. Wow. Wow. Um, the, like I said, the, um, the board members, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, Dr. Atagrid, and Dr. Ghassan, if you kindly turn on your uh, cameras, uh, uh, they have been uh, so helpful and um, uh, amazing uh, uh, partners. I wouldn't have asked for more for better advisors uh, than them. And, uh, and also when we come back to you with any question, I notice that you respond within uh, two to three hours. If you, if you answer after four hours, I am surprised why, why it took you longer than three. 
I, I I'm wedded to my emails, unfortunately. But uh, no, I mean th this is phenomenal, and the reason why we wanted to ask you to present uh, this evening uh, to the ERC uh, is it just shows the art of the possible uh, of of how collaboration, and we're going to be hearing in a few minutes uh, about what is happening within Europe. But this is this is a great example that it's not always straightforward. It's not always easy. There are many barriers, and you you've vocalised ten barriers that we we've seen in our experience to date with the uh, European Restart at Heart. Uh, but obviously, if there's anything that we can do to help and collaborate, then that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to hand back to Professor Bottinger. Yeah, thanks, Andy, and thanks for these very nice impressions from Arab countries and from the Pulse Wave. Uh, I would also like to draw the attention of the audience again to the poll. Will you uh, be doing any activities on October 16 this year or in the weeks before and after? Uh, we have already yes, 56%. I still don't know, 37% and no, only 7%. So this is a very good um, result already. And if you haven't participated in that poll already, you are very cordially invited to do so uh, during the remaining time of our webinar. And it is now a great pleasure for me and honor to introduce the last not least speaker um, in this webinar. It is Dr. Marius Giorgio. He's the director of nursing at the American Medical Center and the American Heart Institute in Nicosia in Cyprus. And um, I think I'm allowed to say that he is one of the pioneers or one of the fathers of European Restart a Heart. And I remember very well and with very warm feelings, Marius, when we visited, I think it was in 2012, the European um, Commissioner on Education in Brussels. Um, and I remember very well that you had um, a lot of members of the European Parliament contacted and that in 2012, and that was the basis for these 400 signatures. We then gathered to support the European Restart a Heart movement and activities. This was during the time when I was chairing the European Resuscitation Council, and you have been a board member for, I don't know exactly, maybe 10 or 15 years. So um, Dr. Marius Giorgio is very active from the beginning with European Restart a Heart and with the European Resuscitation Council, and um, he has been involved in many activities in Europe and beyond um, to make lay resuscitation much more popular than it was before. The, the title of the talk of Marius is World Restart a Heart in Europe. Marius, please. Professor Bettiger, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, Professor Andy, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Professor Bettinger, for the nice introduction. Uh, it, it's, it's an honor for me to, uh, to, to present to you tonight and uh, it's been an honor uh, to to be involved from the beginning uh, in this uh, in this um, uh, effort which uh, now uh, so proud uh, to listen that is getting global and its impact is is phenomenal so in the next 10 minutes or so I will be talking about European restart the heart and how it started about the past, the present, and some thoughts or suggestions for, um, uh, for, for the future. So what you see in, in your screens is, is exactly the leaflet we have used back then. So it all started from a vision. So myself, Professor Bentinger, and a lot of others, we had a vision. And the vision was to, to do something in Europe, to make it, to, to, to train as more people, to, to um, try and help the, the, the mission of ERC back then, uh, making resuscitation available to, to all. 
So um, um, it happened back then to know a member of European Parliament, which uh, in my country, I, I was Antigoni Babadogulu. And by chance, um, uh, we saved her husband from cardiac arrest. So um, I approached her back then and I asked her, would you like to, to help us on making something in Europe? Uh, about the declaration or so, and um, and and I I told her that this is going to uh, um, has a lot of visibility for her and for everybody. So as a politician herself, she probably saw an opportunity and also an opportunity to make something social for uh, for for people. So back in uh, uh, so the story started in uh, in. in 12th of March, 2012, and the campaign where uh, myself, Professor Bettinger, and, and other colleagues, we went to the parliament, giving this leaflet out, uh, trying to convince them to, to vote on that day, the 14th of June, 2012, to, form, to vote for a declaration uh, that um, uh, the ERC uh, actually wrote uh, uh, and she got another uh, another four member of European parliaments to support her. This is uh, a, a regulation. Uh, nobody can put the declaration for voting unless it is supported by five uh, colleagues. So there was uh, uh, five MEPs, uh, if I remember well, one from Bulgaria, uh, from uh, Ireland, uh, Portugal and Spain. So this is the declaration voted back then, and it, it, it personally I found it a strong political tool that a lot of people and a lot of countries have uh, used uh, to to pass on uh, legislation and policies in their uh, countries, and also ERC have used um, uh, to declare the 16th of October as the European Restart the Heart Day. So briefly, this declaration, it calls uh, the Commission and the Council to encourage the adoption of common programs in implementing AMDs in public places, training lay people in all member states. So it was a major um, uh, call to train lay people, the adjustment of legislations, uh, systematic data collection, and now we have Eureka in Europe for systematic data collection, calls the commission and the member state for a European cardiac arrest awareness week um, uh, to improve awareness and education of general public physician and healthcare professionals, um, calls the commission to support member states in adopting and implementing national strategies for equal access to high quality CPR, which it, it is the mission uh, part of the mission of ERC or the mission of ERC. Uh, so also it calls the member state to, to harmonize legislation, uh, to provide immunity from liability to non-medical uh, first responders uh, to, to use uh, in this, uh, which is really important. And back then there was a hesitation from lay people to use a in this. Um, so, uh, as I said, the ERC have taken the opportunity, have taken the, the chance to use this political tool to declare the 16th of October uh, as the um, uh, European Restart the Heart Day. And the first, uh, the first celebration, let's say, the first uh, chance was taken in, in 2013, 16th of October, with the motto of Children Saving Lives. And every year there was a motto for the European Restart uh, uh, a Heart Day. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, first one was Children Saving Lives, as I said, and the, the first big event was, um, uh, was done in um, um, European Parliament uh, with the presence of Professor Betzinger, Marek Karsten, the member of European Parliament, Andigoni Papadopoulou, the Commissioner of Health, Tony Obok, and um, 
the, the president of European uh, Cardiology Society. And of course, the two kids, uh, you see there are two kids from Germany and, and uh, the one on the right is Kia, which saved the life um, um, uh, of uh, the other kid, which are, uh, sorry, sorry, Professor Bettinger, I'm missing the name of the child. So Professor Bettinger uh, managed to bring over these um, kids and the Belgian uh, uh, colleagues, they brought a lot of kids uh, in that day uh, to, to train them on CPR. Even the commissioner of health uh, tried to, to, to uh, and was trained and there was a, was on the media uh, on CPR uh, in that day. So next uh, year, uh, 2014, European Restart the Heart Day, saving loved ones, uh, sa save more lives with the new guidelines was the, was the 16th of October of 2015 or 2016, the co-worker saving lives, and, um, and, and continue, of course, up to 2017, uh, uh, where uh, um, Professor Andy and Bernd, they had the, uh, the, the, the vision uh, to take this to ill core. And this is the present. Uh, and um, the present has been very well uh, described uh, by Professor Bettinger and Professor Loki. Uh, what is happening actually, and also by our colleagues uh, from, from the Arab countries. And this is phenomenal, this is amazing, this is uh, inspiring. So uh, today, where uh, European Restart is no more European, is global, is World Restart, and, and this is the ultimate uh, satisfaction that someone can get uh, if it if it is if it's involved in in this uh, in this effort. I'm I'm showing one inspiring um, for me at least is inspiring picture which shows a lot of of uh, survivors on stage from cardiac arrest. Very good examples have been shown by by Nadine uh, in social media from other survivors and the hashtag and so forth. So uh, let me close this, um, this um, presentation by, by giving you some, some, of, of some thoughts uh, of some perspectives that um, with this uh, global um, um, uh, initiative, with this effort, with this inspiration, it, it can, it, it can happen. So um, by taking the strong political tool uh, of the declaration, I'm sure uh, that with a good vision uh, that uh, we can uh, achieve legislation in every European country and uh, ERC can lobby uh, towards this. Uh, at, this, at this point, I, I can tell you that ERC is trying for the 10 years of the, this declaration, is trying to, to ma manage an event at the European Parliament. Uh, so uh, during this event, I believe uh, ERC will have the opportunity to, uh, to, to lobby and to speak with politicians. Um, we hopefully have, we will have the commissioner of uh, current commissioner of health present, which is uh, from my country and uh, I'm lucky to know her personally. And also colleagues from Malta will uh, lobby to have the current president of the European parliament, which is Maltese. So legislation all over the world, lobby from, from ILCOR. So I'm not talking about Europe, I'm talking about the globe. So yes, I think uh, uh, supporting documents, supporting uh, statements from a call can help colleagues around the world to, to um, promote political um, uh, actions. And I'm, I'm sure policies can help and can increase bystander CPR. And there are 
uh, uh, this has been uh, proven and there are publications on that. So adoption of common programs of implementing AMDs in public places and training lay people in all member states, in all states, in all countries of the world. Adjustment of the legislation in order to facilitate CPR and defibrillation by non-medical persons. So again, the, the declaration is there. It's already 10 years old, but it is still valid. Provide immunity from liability to non-medical first responders who offer voluntary assistance in cardiac emergencies. It is something that might uh, make people hesitate to approach and help other people. So except of uh, promoting awareness, training lay people, we have to look into these bits, uh, into these points. And finally, we need to create national strategies for equal access to high quality CPR. So with these um, visions, uh, I, I, we may name them, uh, I would uh, like to, to thank you uh, for this opportunity and sharing um, um, uh, these uh, visions and the, and the past and the present, which already be presented perfectly uh, from uh, our colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Marius, for this excellent uh, presentation and overview about the activities in the past and the present and the visions for the future in Europe. And um, I, I can say that I had several very, very nice and warm memories on what we have done um, already in Europe. And by the way, we have been a little bit successful. I would like to repeat what I said at the beginning. We have now six European countries where school children education is mandatory by law. They need to be educated, and we have at least 23 countries where this is a strong suggestion. And this is based upon our activities in Europe, and I think we can really be proud of that. And that can also be one path for the future. So one of the goals should be to mandatory educate all school children. And you can start at the age of 10 years or maybe 12 years, but 10 is okay with check, call, and compress. You can already start in the kindergarten with check and call. Four-year-old children can do this. And we then um, educate um, younger um, adults when they are 16 years around in ventilation and AED. But check, call, compress is the key message. Can be done already with 10 years. And this should go in all school curricula and uh, maybe petitions, as Nadine pointed out, can help here. Um, I don't, if, sorry. If I can add and reinforce what you have just uh, said, uh, we may also say uh, about the, the training of school children that there is a project going now on uh, that uh, of course, Germany is involved, Italy and Cyprus about life force, which uh, is preparing uh, the, um, uh, educational materials for, for teachers and for school children, exactly the age you have mentioned, uh, Bernd, and um, it, it is going to be soon available to be shared and disseminated. Yeah, thanks. Um, and also, uh, Professor Bossinger, I would uh, like to say that you can probably increase the number because although technically you're probably counting United Kingdom as one in, in the mandated uh, training of children, we are obviously four very diverse countries that are, are part of the United Kingdom and all four of our devolved nations. So England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales have got a mandate to teach children CPR. So you can probably add another three countries to your list there. So it's not only six European countries, but nine European countries. But then also the denominator is changing if you are dividing UK into four into four parts, isn't it? But well, let's not talk about dividing UK into four parts. I well, think well a political uh, debate <laughs> that is beyond the remit of this. Uh, this your webinar. your point is well taken, and we will see which parts of UK will then rejoin the European Union in the years to come, probably. Um, 
we don't have any further questions in Slido, and I would like to point your attention to the poll. We have now 59% uh, percent of participants saying, yes, we will do um, any activity on October 16 this year or before or after, and seven who are saying no. And again, I would like to mention, please always use the hashtag World Restart a Heart. You may use also other hashtags, but it would be great if you can use the hashtag World Restart a Heart. And what I also like would like to add, because Marius, you have shown us the nice picture with Kea, she was 16 years old when she resuscitated the 12 years old Nick. And both have joined me and us during many activities in Germany and in Europe. And it's really by chance that I can tell you that Nadine and myself, we have been invited to the school where Nick and Kea were educated as school children several years ago. Just today, we were there this morning because this school and the local authorities here upon our activities uh, invited 120 teachers from all the area around Cologne. And we have trained these teachers um, in, for four hours in uh, how to do CPR and how they can then educate their school children in CPR. We have used the curriculum of the German Resuscitation Council, which is also valuable on our websites. We have a curriculum in German and in English on how to teach school teachers. And we have a curriculum in how to teach school children. And also the ERC has developed several proposals and statements and activities on how to teach children and teachers. So please go, if you like, to our websites and um, and uh, paste paste it and copy it and uh, use it if you like. But what I just wanted uh, to say is that by chance we have been in the school of Nick and Kea. And we also mentioned again that story that Kea resuscitated successfully Nick when they were waiting for more than 10 minutes for the emergency medical services. And Kea was trained by the German Red Cross from the age of eight years on in how to do first aid and, and CPR. A very touching moment again for, for me this morning. Um, One of the most amazing moments. Yeah. And stories. Yeah. Um, I am looking again to Slido. No further questions appearing on Slido um, for us now. So I would suggest that we are doing a final round so that everyone um, who was presenting something today has the opportunity to have some closing sentence or some one, two or three closing sentences. If you agree, Andy, if this is okay for you, uh, we would like to start with, with Mario. So Marius, what are your final messages, visions, sentences for today, tonight, for all my, of us. My, thank you, thank you. My final message is that uh, if you have a vision and you believe, it's possible. You can even move mountains, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> thank you very much, Marius. Um, and then I'm asking Zara for your final remarks. Yeah, thank you. So my message is uh, no one is left behind. Uh, honestly, this is our goal. We would like to approach everybody as much as possible uh, uh, October and beyond October as well. It's not going to stop. Thank you very much. And um, Gazan? Dr. Gazan? Yes, I'm... Hi. Yes, my message is that change brings um, challenge, and challenge brings change. Oh, we are learning a lot of um, of good um, 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 sentences tonight, isn't it? Thank you very much, Gazan. Um, Nadine. If I come back to my topic and can add to what Sarah said, 
don't forget about social media because there you can get a lot of people that maybe you can't get with face-to-face -face training because they are just not in your area. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nadine. My conclusion is I'm very thankful that we had this ERC webinar today. I'm very thankful to all who are in this webinar as presenters and as participants. We have really changed the world at least a bit into a positive, into a more positive world over the last 10 or 15 years with our activities. And we will strongly continue. Every activity counts. Please use hashtag World Restarter Hard. Check, call, compress. All that is needed to save a life is two hands. And with this, it's over to and. Andrew Lockie. Thank you very much. I think what we've heard tonight is uh, a good narrative of where we've come from with Restart a Heart, where we are at the moment, and where we're trying to head. Uh, we know that we've got momentum in terms of delivering training, and hopefully as face-to-face -face training returns in the hopefully post-COVID era, uh, that will help to improve uh, the, the amount of training that we can do. Um, we've heard uh, particularly uh, from uh, Marios about strategies and plans with the European Parliament going forward. And clearly, if there is anybody who has links in with the European Parliament, uh, then please contact Marios in the first instance, uh, because we want to uh, utilise as best as possible any sort of political leverage that we can to get more countries to have CPR as a mandated part of the school curriculum. Uh, and we've uh, also heard some wonderful strategies from our colleagues uh, in the Arab community, uh, where, where there's a, a, an amazing diverse nature of, of, of interventions uh, that we've seen on the world stage. So including social media, but also including face-to-face, -face, involving political uh, pressure, uh, some wonderful examples of where we're heading in the future. Uh, one of the other things which uh, Zara mentioned, which is uh, very, very important, is the issue around health inequality. So making sure that uh, the uh, opportunities are equal so that everybody has that opportunity. And that's why we've come up with a motto, which is everybody deserves the opportunity. Everybody deserves the opportunity to be taught CPR, but everyone deserves the opportunity to have their life saved by CPR. Uh, Professor Bossinger? If, if you are ready, I don't want to interrupt you. I would also like to thank very cordially Francesc Carmona from the ERC offices for providing this platform and the opportunity to do this webinar. I would also like to thank Jan van Doren, the new CEO of the ERC, for actively participating uh, tonight and supporting us. And uh, the final the final word is, is for you, Professor Andrew Lockie. Thank you. Uh, and we cannot leave this uh, webinar without thanking uh, Helene van Grutenven, who for many years has been uh, our absolute strength and stay uh, in ERC. Uh, Helene has moved to another job and we wish her all the best uh, wishes for her new job but I want to acknowledge the phenomenal work that she has done to help us over the years. So in closing, we have 6% of people who are not going to be doing any activities on the 16th of October. I would encourage you to maybe rethink. And even if that activity is to repost a social media post, that would be better than nothing at all. Uh, and hopefully we've inspired you to, to join the crusade uh, so that uh, all citizens of the world can save a life. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. Thank you very much.